Welcome back, Panther fans. I'm David Brown here with Ryan Graham. Hey, y'all. Tim Thurber. Hello. And this is State of Atlanta. Hey, does everybody have cans today? Look at that. We got we we, we were not really in unison there, but uh special guest that. can from uh Florida. Ooh, Florida? Okay. What do you what do you got? What I forgot it? it's an Appalach IPA. <clears throat> uh, but Florida's like not that. Appalachian. No, they're not, but Appalachicola. Oh a place. That place. Yeah. I heard there's a place that this is completely irrelevant to anything we're talking about, but I saw a TikTok today that apparently after the Civil War, 100,000 Confederate soldiers moved to a city in Brazil called Americana, and they still have like Rebel Day or some crap like that everywhere. They have like the Confederate flag flying and they celebrate their southernness or something like that. I just thought it was like, I thought it was crazy. Never heard of that. So is that where the Nazis went after World War II? Probably the right. same place. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah, South America. Yeah. Some they like, moved there, right? Yeah. 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 Well, you know, uh, Kim's going there for work. Maybe she can figure it all out for us when she's lost. She's there. <laughs> she can figure uh, out the mystery. She can ask somebody. Oyster City. Oyster City IPA. So Apple right. IPA that. from Oyster City. It is. Uh, it's tasty. I Back forgot I had them. I felt, I went in the fridge. And I'm like, ooh, bonus beer. Like, There's bonus yeah. beer in here that I forgot I had, which is always a good thing. I drank so much beer over the holiday weekend, like so much beer. It was a. a I woke up yesterday feeling a little uh, gross, but I had my bocce game I had to go to, so Got power through. Had, to keep, had to keep the party going. So how, how, how was y'all's fourth? Good fourth. That's all, Tim. Yeah. What? I, my fourth was good. I it didn't do a whole lot of here. anything, honestly. I had the day off, and I had to work the next day, so it was sort of like a weird island. <clears throat> but I didn't oh, really do a whole lot. Tim and I did the Peachtree race, but uh, he uh, finished, well, he started an hour before me, so he finished well before me, and we didn't meet up afterwards or anything. But I did run into... Uh, even if he started at the exact same time, he was going to finish well before you. I did run into Georgia State people Probably. at the, the bar afterwards, so... Which is cool. random of all places, right? Yeah, it wasn't even open. Like We we showed up there, and they hadn't opened up yet, and uh, we kind of sat in there, just waiting for another 30 minutes for them to open up and get our beer. Keep Don't the party they, all bars know what 4th of July means? Free money, drinking. I mean, especially on you know uh, in Atlanta, if you're downtown Midtown Bar, you yeah. want to be, be open. Open. We, up. we have fifty thousand people to descend upon the city, uh, you know, at one point, or I guess over the course of several hours. But anyhow, did you actually stay for the track club post game, post race, free beer? Because like when I finished, the line was a mile long. Well, they can't imagine. The race. I don't really cancel it, but. I mean, you finished well before that, right? Oh, yeah. I finished well before that. Yeah. I just can imagine waiting in line for a free beer, like that long of a line. The line when it got to when you finished. With the, I oh, yeah. Like, I remember seeing I saw the line. I was like, I'm not getting into that at all. But I did get some people that, uh, you know, were my, my types of people. Oh, I, I just saw, I saw a trash down South guy. And so I said, I shouted ghost date to him. And he said, go Southern. And I was like, no. Go state. <laughs> No, that's that's the wrong thing. But no, I found some people and they asked me if I wanted a cocktail. And I said, yes. And they said, you want a screwdriver? And I said, yes, yes, please. They said, well, what ratio do you want? I'm like, a little splash for color. And so I got a full solo cup of vodka to take with me along Peachtree. It, it was it was a lot for me. <laughs> <laughs> that little orange orange juice garnish. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice little sipper as you traverse down Peachtree. Uh, great good. time as always. Best day of the year. Best day of the, of the year in Atlanta for sure. So, all right, Georgia State stuff. Uh, Sun Belt Media Days coming up, July twenty third, twenty fourth. Breaking news: Will they have the right background up for Georgia State and Georgia <laughs> Southern? And that is the yearly with question. a new CID. Are we considered media? Well, you know, I thought about that Ooh. every year. I think about ever since ever since we started doing. We're going into our fifth season, fifth, our fifth athletics, but it's only our fourth of actually having a Sun Belt Media Day because you know we started well after that in that first year. And I, I've always thought about whether or not we wanted to get media credentials to do Media Day. But one, it's in New Orleans, so I don't want to go. And uh, two, I just don't think that's what we are. I don't. I think. We'll, there's also to me there's there's very little value comes out of it like they they invite a couple players and they'll talk a little bit about very general 
coach the win games. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, workouts are, are going great because workouts are never going poorly, right? I mean, we're never going to say it, even if they are. And they go out there and they say, oh, yeah, we're coalescing as a team, blah, blah, blah. And, like, you know, it just, like, nothing interesting. There's no, nothing. I, I, I am, I am a little inter- interested in seeing what, you know, just being his first year, seeing what Coach A.D. McGee has to say. Coach sure. A.D. McGee just, 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 is, a, is a doer. He's not exciting when he talks. I actually don't not. care when he talks. He's kind of a boring guy, but he's a doer. <sighs> I'm really excited about all the stuff that he does. He'll just get all the shit done we need done so we can That's win right. the championship. That's and he, it. he won't even talk about it. He'll just do it. I <laughs> say I say we are somewhat tipsy and we're kind of like flirting with actually doing media day and being media. But then we mm-hmm. then we like we didn't have enough to drink. So then we're like, no, 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 no. we're not doing this. No. Well, walk, I walk there, away. There, she's there not is pretty. she's not there is effort, a you know? media there's a media person, a podcaster that covers Arkansas State, and I've already talked to her about uh-huh. coming on the show before our game this season and she's in but she refers to it as like a or she's made some some tweets about media days just being like the drunken sunbelt party and just like after after all the stuff that goes on you know during the day because it's two days long with the east and western division and i'm like well now now yeah, you have like my fun. interest <laughs> can we just go now, for the party is it as the press and the coaches and the players all hanging out and just you know we're like, can we get press time? credentials? They're like, oh yeah. When do you want uh, time to to interview coach? And like, oh, no. we we don't. Okay, we just, well, what time is the press heard, conference over? <laughs> yeah, I heard there was a party that people could go to. <laughs> We'd be like, just just hand him an iPad, and uh, we'll he'll get on uh, Streamyard with him. Yeah, that'll be, yeah, that'll we'll be an interview. And we know, we do know that Coach Ad McGee is a drinker because he did say at one at the um one of those uh. Uh, spring tour things, the one that the private one they had at Coke, that they asked what his favorite Bourbon? Dave Cohen asked what his favorite uh, Coke drink was, and he's like, as long as it's mixed with a little uh, rum, I don't care or whiskey. Rum. Rum or whiskey. It was whiskey actually. So, so, oops, I'm not sure if you guys could hear that, but yeah, that was weird. We did. You just kind of flashed and then got loud. You saw a lot. And, they got, and they got super loud. Yeah, it again. Oh. What are you doing, man? Kids, no, now we can't hear my you. kids visiting my, my little can't even hear me at all now. Now we can, yeah. Now I can, okay. My uh, my kids visiting my sister in Memphis and has been calling me non stop since she's been gone. So, oh man, this 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 the setup did not like that at all. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he still right, can't you, hear us either. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you not hear me? No, we can hear you. You're good. Okay, cool. Uh, so cool. media days. days, booze, New Orleans. Yeah, you guys talk for a second. I would love to go on a trip to New Orleans with y'all. I don't know if we would make it through the weekend. What would we even do? I, I don't even like. I it just, I, I just, I did it already, and I don't want. I don't <laughs> care. I don't care to do anything I did before again. I, I think that's what we would end up doing, though, because that's what, the only way to- David's going to be able to to make it through New Orleans. Is if we're all there? If we're all there and we're all just constantly drinking to numb yeah. it. Yeah. And well, I would honestly, what I did was, oh, go ahead. I know if if I'm anywhere, I'm if I'm anywhere that's not working, I'm constantly drinking anyway. So that that was especially if I'm out of town. If I'm not staying in my own home, I'm constantly drinking, no matter where I am. But uh, you know, if I went on the media day, it would have to for me to call it a success. It would have to be just hanging out with the other press podcast people and whatever coaches and players and stuff I, I, i'd have to be just like a a social thing for me the entire time and of course you guys well and we'd, we'd come back and as far as media goes we would have a stories to tell here we would so like how many shots mcgee did exactly. well coach ad <laughs> mcgee would do a bunch of shots and then tell us the real scanning the, the real film. real yeah yeah, yeah we get what, all the so one of the well, so one of the things I'm interested in, because you know, Coach Ad McGee has been a vocal at this point about thinking Georgia State's in the wrong conference and needing to get out of Sun Belt. So now he's going to Sun Belt Media Days. You know, I doubt anybody's going to ask him a question about that. But how does he feel about having to be along with these other garbage coaches with these garbage teams <laughs> in the garbage town? See, we should go. So you no, can we should ask go. That. No, we should go and be like, <laughs> what do you like best about the Sun Belt and why? Why are you again? No wonder Allison wouldn't let us ask questions. (laughs) 
why are you excited about coaching in the in the Sun Belt? What what, what about this conference really just uh, tickles your fancy? Why, why uh, you know, to, to take your first D one college uh, head football coaching career into the Sun Belt? Like you know, this must have been something you've been looking forward to your entire life. Look, but talking shit like that, you got to win. Yeah, yeah. You, well, actually, we're, we're talk- you do. Yes. Yeah. And there's not a lot, nice little, decent little segue. There's not a lot of, um, he's not getting a lot of credit coming in as a new head coach at Georgia State. The the few preseason rankings that have been coming out from different uh, sources, whatever, are not looking favorably on uh, on Georgia State at all. Uh, The biggest of which is... um, Phil Steele, everyone thinks he's like the uh, the king the of the preseason yeah. and everything. Uh, has us last in the East Division. He's not alone. Athlon Sports, uh, Willis Sports didn't do it by division, but they had Georgia State 129th out of 134 out of all FBS teams. Which is just crazy. gotta say, Willis Sports is not legitimate. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty bad. That's pretty that's bad. pretty much the underlying like posts that you see against willis sports in the Sun Belt for everything yeah. willis sports posts not just well there that. was well there was one who are they the southern charm sports they had us ryan in a top 25 g5 ranking they had us as the 19th best g5 program which i don't know how that falls Still exactly 129 overall but well, it's better, it's better <laughs> number 20 <laughs> So, but no, that's impossible. Is, but <laughs> when they when they posted their thing, their, their top comment was the, from themselves on on Twitter, and it said, "Now I know what big game boomer feels like because they were just getting ripped apart by people telling them how horrible their rankings were." Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I, I think people just really have no clue, and I and they err on the side of um of history, right? I mean, so like Georgia State historically has not done so hot, and we have like no one on the field is going to be someone from last year. You know I mean? It's crazy. Well, I think they look at uh, Sean Elliott leaving and leaving when he did ne- like a huge then, negative. Right. And then losing. Uh, well, people losing- accused him of leaving because they, they thought he was going to lose this year, that, that he knew he was going to be kind of a loser this Whoa. year. And so he left. I, well, I, 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 I saw people say that. I don't necessarily. I don't believe that, but I saw people say that. So I right. don't think that he left because he thought he was going to lose here. I I do think part of the NIL transfer portal thing has frustrated him to no end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, for sure. he, he was he, he was tired of he was tired of coaching in that environment. Yeah, and we we all knew as soon as South Carolina offered him a job, and apparently any job. He was going to hop and take it. So head jam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this. So what I was saying though is that that thought is out there, and when people are are making these rankings, they they might be thinking the same thing because that well, was lose- something that I don't I don't necessarily subscribe to that, but yeah. people do think that he like opted out of a losing season. Even well, before it, he opted out, though, I mean, we did. Didn't we have a bunch of transfers out? Like, well, yeah, that's what I say. Yeah. Not not just transfers, but Granger graduates, and then you got Marcus Carroll and Robert Lewis that take SEC play uh, um, positions, and you know you lose a lot of a lot of different guys and everything. But but you look at it, and <laughs> Sean Elliott had. If you look at the recruiting class on on twenty four seven Sports, they break out the 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 recruiting recruiting class rankings by you know the high school recruits, and then your, your transfers in, and then an overall ranking. Sean Elliott got us a high school recruiting class that was ranked dead last in in conference. Well, Coach McGee with his transfers and and I guess technically some of the transfers that that uh, Sean had gotten with um, with like Zach Gibson and a few other guys and everything, you know, that rank the transfer class is the eighth, which is not great, but is eighth in conference. But it's taken our overall ranking up to the tenth. So. In a very very short amount of time, Coach Del McGee is all Coach Ad McGee has already shown that he's you know making strides and improving the team. And you look at his twenty twenty five class, it's number one in conference. Stellar, not yeah. number one in conference. Have we right ever now. been number one in conference at any point in time? I don't think so. Uh, uh, Maybe at any point in time is kind of kind of I don't I don't feel comfortable answering that. But we've never yeah. ended that way for sure. 
Yeah, and, right. and who knows? We, we're still, we still we're, we're, we're you know two months out from this season starting, let alone the 2025 season starting. And there's going to be a, as soon as these guys get offers from uh, programs like Georgia State, you know the bigger guys are going to start sniffing around, and, and you know we'll, we'll lose some guys. I think one guy already dropped from warm to cool on his uh, commit to to Georgia State. But either way, he McGee is doing something that we have not seen under Sean Elliott. Uh, recruiting Atlanta, recruiting Georgia, bringing in bigger guys, you know, getting a, a recruiting class that's actually getting some – should deserve some respect. I'm excited about the guy, and I don't think people are paying enough attention to what he's actually doing here. I think it's one of those things with his G5 program. It's a Sun Belt program. It's a historically not successful program, you know, at the highest level of I'm, our ability. So, I mean, I'm sold, on the, I'm sold on the trajectory alone. I mean – I don't follow the recruiting rankings and the stars and the r- rankings of the whatever, but the fact that we were dead last and he's pulled us up to what tenth and then next Eight. year first, even yeah. if we land at four, I mean, you gotta you gotta take that. He that's like hard work too. That it's a huge he's putting in to get the recruits to get people to come here to get highly ranked players, you know, three stars or whatever all that work is going to pay off. It has to pay off next year. And well, if not and next year, exactly, year after two years of exactly what people said he was good at too, which I was concerned about being good at it at, at UGA versus being good at it at Georgia state is our right. two different, two different things. And so it seems like he is really good at it here too. He's, he's so far been great. So, and not just the recruiting aspect of it, you know, we got our NIL started and plateaued really quickly, right at that $10,000 mark. And, you know, McGee comes in here and he's like, that's the most, that's the biggest part of, of recruiting now is NIL money. And it has skyrocketed. All, and all we know is what, we've heard about or what has been on that, you know, donation or sorry, contribution site. You can't call it donations, the contribution site, which is, you know, well over a hundred thousand dollars now. So it's, you know, more than 10 times what it was when he came in here. Plus we hear about a hundred thousand dollar donor and a lot of corporate things that have been going on that will not be, re- will not be reflected in that site. He's been making a lot of strides here that has never been seen before at Drew estate. He's yep. making a lot of things happen. And hell look at his, look, we talked about it last week a little bit. His the staff he's got on board, the guys he's brought in to coach these guys. The eighty five staff members we have. <laughs> exactly. You know. <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, it just seems like a lot. I mean, screw, posi- screw position players. We're gonna have uh, our position uh, coaches. We're gonna have player coaches. We're gonna have a coach <laughs> for every single player. <laughs> he back. He back. NFL. That's NFL national championship experience. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's. He's like fixing all the things that Elliot wasn't doing. <laughs> like and did Elliot transfer not portal do- effectively, high school recruiting really effectively. Debatable. Obviously, Elliot like diving into South Carolina or take any the best player from wherever, which I completely agree with, but also you gotta recruit the crap out of the state you're in, right? I mean, take what you get there and then take everything else from elsewhere. Yeah, get get the best out of uh, everywhere you can. But when you're living such a fertile recruiting ground, there's no reason that you know you should not be trying to keep players here versus going to play, especially the guys that were going to Appy State and right. going to Marshall. And you know, we all the time we watch these games. They talk about the, where the players come from, and every single game we play gets Sun Belt competition. They're like, you know, and this guy, you know, went to high school with you know these other players or came from Beaufort high school or, or wherever it was so many and, of those teams are half georgia recruits it's crazy right <laughs> yeah. it can't hurt that he actually lives in the state and in this area to immediately, immediately moved like he was living in athens and, and he didn't he didn't decide to commute from athens i'm not sure if you've checked out a map, map lately far closer than columbia south carolina is and his family picked up and moved to Atlanta, which is not that big of a thing, but the fact that we had a head coach for seven years that did not do that, seven years, eight years, how long was he here? I mean, I all I can do is help his personal like work-life balance, right? Think about it that way. He can leave the stadium and get home at a reasonable well, time. And it helped, it helped that his kid actually uh, graduated high school this uh, spring <laughs> and <laughs> will be playing at Georgia State. We'll, we'll be there at the stadium. With him. <laughs> his son's like, Dad, can you move? I don't want you living here. He's like, yeah, oh I was God, gonna say, I wonder, I wonder if his son was actually like upset about it because he had already committed. 
right <laughs> before all before coach came on and so i wonder if he was just like come on man <laughs> i didn't want uh, i didn't want this i guess he could have left could have gone yeah, i think that other <laughs> school oh no oh man oh no we don't need no, no civil war that would have been right? crazy <laughs> Brothers, like, son, brothers fathers the... against sons. It's like son, I'm gonna beat the crap out of you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then at home. So yeah. <laughs> this is the exact opposite of what happened with uh Coach Hunter and RJ because uh coach took the job here and then RJ just Got decided us. to follow his dad here and, and would not recruit him. <clears throat> coach Hunter did not recruit his own son. He uh he put one of his assistants on him and said, you know, it's your job to get him here. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to recruit my own son. I thought he, he said to he'd get, give him a car if he came here. He did say that um, he was wow. going to buy him a car for graduation, but that car would only have Georgia license plates on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, I, I was going to say there was a funny joke in there because, like, like it was like a weird loophole in that kind of rule back then. <laughs> like well, now, yeah, you, you can just buy you can just buy a player a car, and that's that's multiple, fine. Multiple but, cars. But now. back then, there was like loopholes, and he was like, "Ah, it's my son. What do you think it'll stop me from buying my kid a son?" But, my kid a car <laughs> yeah i mean plenty of kids get uh cars for graduate i did not get a car for a graduation present i don't think i got a graduation present now my my mom made me get a uh she, she said she was buying me a car she got a, a new car but it was a it was a mitsubishi mirage so whatever Ooh. and uh but it was but it was new so it was overpriced and then she like paid for it for a few months and then was just like, ah, oh, it's yours now. And I'm like, but I don't want this. <laughs> I don't want to pay for this. <laughs> I didn't pick this out. Yeah, Is it it Mirage? Was, I knew I was going to be paying for it. You wouldn't have had a choice. <laughs> Isn't Mirage a horrible name for a product? Because like a Mirage is supposed to be like this great, wonderful thing that you see, it's but it doesn't there. really exist. It's not really there. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> they don't exist anymore. Maybe, maybe mm. that's why. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do they ever exist? The honest <laughs> figments of Do our they imagination. Even have a car? <laughs> <laughs> you, you were just walking to and from work every day, and you had no idea that you weren't driving a car. <laughs> it's like a, it's like one of those movies. It's like a Tyler Durden type thing, you know. It's yeah, like exactly. the whole time just me walking, sad, like shuffling yeah, my feet. Much. But you're walking with your hands up on a steering wheel, like honking the horn, like waiting at red lights, and. <laughs> <laughs> And the car flashes so, in for like a frame. Just, just, just don't get run over. That's all. You were so dumb, Ryan. <laughs> I, I love this idea for a movie. <laughs> <laughs> a great little comedy sketch there. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see what else we got going on. Uh, we. Um, oh, that was another ranking. I missed that. Oh, I, I, I think I said an F on. They suck. Um, Willis, he's terrible. Willis is yeah. terrible. Oh, the one thing Willis got correct was Kennesaw State as the worst team in all of college football. Oh, that's so which sad. honestly, honestly, I don't think that's true. You know, their first year in FBS, they will not be worst. They will not. They will not finish a season as the 134th team. I, I, I mean, not going to do good. I don't think they're going to do good by any stretch. But they're playing in Conference USA, so they're playing half their schedule is going to be FCS teams, anyways. So they won't be they won't be last place. I thought I thought it was interesting. They did have um uh Tennessee Tech, an actual P five, P four program that was ranked below us at uh I don't know what we were one twenty nine, so one thirty, one thirty one, one thirty two. Did you say they, Tennessee Tech? That was Tennessee Tech, sorry, Texas Tech. Texas Tech. Oh. Okay. I was like Tennessee that, Tech, that's yeah, like, that's if that's, right. real, that's not if a that's real. That's a real thing. school. That's definitely not Division One or not F, um, <laughs> FBS. <laughs> no, Oof. so um, yeah, and they were a seven six team last season. So well, we were seven six team wow. last season. So you're saying Texas Tech is lower than us? That's what Willis Sports said. Oh, forget yeah. it then. That's bullshit. Yeah, the the teams below us were Nevada, you might as, New, might as well New Mexico, Tech. Texas Tech, Akron, and Kennesaw State. Hmm. So, I don't. I, I don't know what Kennesaw State's going to do, but they're going. They're not going to be last place. So, I'd be okay with it. I'd be happy with it. I just the, beat the, the line for us for wins is what four and a half this year, isn't it? Four and a half, five and a half, five somewhere in there. I think it was. I think it was uh, five. Five and a half. Four and a half or five and a half. Yeah. 
I mean, wasn't it the same last year? We're like five and a half wins, maybe. And we knocked that out in the first four weeks, by the first five weeks. Flying so, high. Four and a half. Four and a half? Okay. Four and a half. According to Heroes board. So I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't know what that is, but I think we'll be that. I take well, the over. So, so another thing I looked yeah. at, I mentioned this in our in our group chat several weeks ago. Something I looked at, why things when when ESPN came out with their their FPI or the SP plus one of their one of their ranking mechanisms they have for all the programs. I just went through and, and looked at all the teams that we play and the teams they play before they play us. And the if the higher ranked team wins in every scenario, we don't play a team with a winning record until Appalachian State in week nine. Every team that we play will have will have either a losing or tied record you know, before we get to them or when we get to them. Is that good for us or bad for us? Because I mean, we're, we're not teams that are if we win the games. <laughs> well, we're, we're, not really, we're not ranked. I think we're only we're only ranked higher than not including Chattanooga. We're only ranked higher than two of the teams that we play in ODU and um, I think Marshall. I think the only two teams that we were ranked higher than, but uh, I, I, just, I think it's if we took care of our business and everything else plays out just the way these you know rankings are, mm-hmm. yeah, we're um, we're what I guess it's uh, six and six and zero oh going into Appy State with um, first time pl- playing a team that uh, has a winning record and there's only there's only four of them that had a winning record. So it was Appy, JMU, and Coastal. Maybe 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 it's only three that had a winning records. I didn't want to talk about it. This will be the year we beat Appy. Hey, if once Ryan says it, I, I know you're going to will it into being. I, I mean, I don't know where that came from. It was really just me holding us back. <laughs> He's nah, brand new the, team, the brand new coach. Time. Like, I mean, what does history even mean? Right, right. History's gone. It's, he doesn't know about halftime timeouts. It's a long. It's a lot. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> If something crazy like that happens, I'll just be like, fire him, fire him now. I don't care. <laughs> I don't even I don't even care for six no at that point. If there's we, like three timeouts. Nope. We've seen this go. movie. It is terrible. We're not watching it again. Yeah. They, <laughs> exactly. Oh shit. We're done. Weren't they making someone a rule uh, to speed up the game that you basically could yeah. not do that? Right. You, you couldn't do like back to back timeouts when a kicker is up or something like that. Is it that yes. going to effect? Is it did it go into I effect? Think- I think it did, yeah. So I think. How yeah. does that save time? You still get three timeouts. You can't, you can't call them back take, and back. You can't take them consecutively. How does so that like, save time, though? If you, if you, you, no matter what, you have three timeouts. So, like, well, the game we're talking about, the the game at Appalachian State in December, where yeah. we took all three timeouts at the the closing seconds of the game, we would have only been able, only been able to take one, and then the play would have had to have happened, and then you could take the other ones, which obviously time expired. On that kick, so yeah, so we missed part, but that's fine. We lost yeah, two that makes sense. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Okay, you can't I was just thinking kicker. like in terms of I'm, like if you did it in the middle I'm of a game. I, I I'm fine with icing the kicker, but I'm also fine with you know back to back icing three icings and like come on just let's let's, let's get on with the game. Either that's, either the guy's gonna make it or he's not gonna make it. You know, I'd be interested in seeing stats that support icing kickers. Um, like go look at the stats of like a single uh, or a group of kickers and o- over time, like when they're iced and when they're not iced and like what actually happens there, because I would bet that the data show that it's not that effective. It's probably like a 51% success rate. I mean, it's probably if, if, if they're, if it's successful, it's like right at it. Cause if it's not successful, coaches aren't going to do it. Coaches would not be doing it. If it's not, a successful I think they do thing. a lot of shit that's not successful. We watch a lot of terrible football year in and year out. We watch a lot of good football too. But well, we watch a lot of terrible football because we're in the Sun Belt Conference. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I mean, you see conservative. I mean, even 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 in the NFL, you see the Falcons go conservative like whoa, super whoa. early. No, what? I mean, Jim you Moore, do. Jim Moore, Jim Moore Jr. on the very first drive of, the, of his very first game, get a I know touchdown. You tell the story all the damn time, and then did an onside kick. I, I know I, we play him again. He he had, he uh, he's the head coach of UConn, and I really want to have him we on here to talk it. about the game. But I, I think I'll just talk about the Falcons the entire time. Could you just tell him all about his his onside kick? <laughs> <laughs> was it was it the uh, the Chris Farley thing on Saturday? Remember that time? Remember that time when you did this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I kind of wonder with the uh, con- I kind of wonder the consecutive timeouts if there's a loophole. Like you call a timeout, then you have a quote player injury on the field, which calls it 
timeout, but that's the injury timeout. Can you call it an one? equipment issue? So yeah, is it like, like the special special teams players are like jogging out there and somebody just like keels over and grabs their <laughs> knee like oh! <laughs> like as they're jogging out? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the the kicker unties his shoes during the timeout or something. Like, I guess you the, kick, the kicker wouldn't do that because they're the ones getting iced. Yeah, you yeah. I wouldn't weird do that. like that. Yeah. Uh, you know what though? It might be some like real fancy Drew Little Bo Schlechter stuff going on there. You know, there used to be there used to be barefoot kickers in the NFL. Oh. Kickers that would they 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 felt like they had, they had a better connection with the ball and doing a. I saw an entire TikTok video about it. It was uh, astounding. Seems like a good way kickers. to get your foot broken, especially if it's like cold out like that. That that December it seems like game it's hurt really Adelaide. bad. <laughs> Also that. Because you gotta kick like like you go look at um some of those things where they let fans kick the ball, you know, and like they don't <laughs> kick it that far. Like no. it's really kind of a tough thing to do. Like you gotta well, kick you're not, shit out of the ball. Well, you don't kick with your toe, right? I you don't know. The, I don't know. Kicker. <laughs> you kick with the top of your foot, right? I don't know. I don't think See? you kick with your toe. I don't think you kick with your toe. I think you uh, that, no. Yeah, I, at least I, I know in soccer you're supposed to <clears> kicking with the the top of your foot so you're talking to me and 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 david i don't kick so you know i don't kick with my toe with the top of my foot with any <laughs> i don't kick well as a member of the uh what 12 year 13 year adult kickball league natural born <laughs> kickers we all kicked with our top of our foot and not with our toe so mm. and we were natural born kickers so we would know that right that's, that's you know what i'm just gonna go ahead and seed it to you you would know best. There we go. All right. I don't know if I have anything else. You know? I mean, you know what? I was just looking at the the um, calendar and being like, "Shit, y'all, we're we're not we're not we're that the, far away. We're in the summer, but we're, we're in, yeah. We're, what two months? Not even two you months. Sixty something yeah. days, fifty something days. Where are we at now? <clears throat> so I've got it. I've got a spreadsheet on my. Uh, computer upstairs i don't yes, have it you do. down here we'll yes, be drinking in a parking lot in no time y'all it's gonna take too long to get there we need it we, we well we need to figure out our tailgate plans for tech we keep on talking about it we gotta figure that out so clock is ticking right getting closer and closer yep uh the only other thing that i had uh we, we kind of talked about it before but it, 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 as much as i, I talked crap about the sunbelt conference was you know 24 7 sports put out a their ranking of the power rankings of the conferences and they list Sunbelt as number five you know behind the the p4 the, the, the top g5 conference and f- obviously uh, the pack two coming I in like, dead last at 10. i feel like cbs sports did that too maybe maybe cbs sports there was a t- tweet that went out that we saw or that referenced referenced cbs sports and i went looking for the actual it wasn't anywhere to be article found. And I found the same article that got posted this week on 24 7 Sports. It, it was probably it was the same ranking. Sports. No, it was 24 7. But was it was, it? The, the rankings were the exact same. They were the exact well, same. Wait, wait. 24 7 is CBS. Oh, are they? Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so it's, yeah. Not like the, it's not like the real CBS Sports, it's like the subsidiary, right? Some company they own or whatever. But yeah. yeah, yeah. I, and, you know, as much as I hate this conference, if we're going to be in a, a G5 conference, I want to be in the one that's the best. But until until P4 programs start poaching teams from the Sun Belt, you know, American's still the best. Out, our, our Mountain West are still the best out there. Well, and it's not the best in terms of money still. So, which is my, which was my, which was, wait, put me over the hump saying that we sh- should be in the AAC. Remember, I was like, oh, Sun Belt seems fine because we're, we're actually like, it's a good, it's a, it's a competitive conference and the, the teams are good. They're the best G five conference pretty much like playing wise, but uh, the money money wise, we're nowhere near the top. We should be, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say nowhere near. I think that's, that's a stretch. I think that um, I don't like the teams that are, were associated for the most part. I don't like the teams we're associated with in the Sun Belt. I think the American makes more sense for Georgia state, but when it comes down to it, whichever conference has the most money. And I do think the Americans still paying more, mm-hmm. uh, maybe not significantly more to the, to the new teams, but you know, they're, 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 they're a uh, commissioner out there has, has said that realignment is not done and they've not closed the door or anything. So with coach AD, AD McGee here, maybe the next time that door is open or somebody, somebody steps out and says, we're looking for somebody. 
he pushes the hand or gets Blake to pull the trigger and actually get us into the American. Plus, with, with the, the box open and the baseball stadium being uh, breaking ground at some point here in the next couple of months. You know, facilities are there for it. I wouldn't put, put it past McGee to be having those just one-off quick combos with some of these other conferences. Just, hey, how's it going? I'm here. You should take us. Look at us. Be serious. I mean, I'm, we know I'm basically the AD. <laughs> he is. <laughs> so if you well, have any so questions, call me first. <laughs> the I saw today that the AD, I saw today, I saw this week, AD of, uh, of Memphis, Gets a two hundred and fifty thousand dollars bonus to get them into a P four conference. All right, I would be pimping everything to get out. Of it. <laughs> like, so, yeah, that, I was gonna say that president is like, I want a P four conference, and he knows what it's worth for sure. Figure and, it out, right? Get us in there. They got left behind. I mean, they did. So, I mean, <laughs> they're next up though. I mean, they've got to hate the Mormons with BYU. Like they took three teams from the American and, and then BYU. If BYU had like was not in the picture, it probably would have been Memphis. So they, they just have to hate Mormon people now, right? I mean, if another team gets in ahead of Memphis, oof. Well, oof. SMU did. SMU went to uh, ACC. Yeah, they, they, they did. So wow. there was no way Memphis was going to the ACC. No, that that wasn't happening. Yeah. That it's going to take a complete meltdown of the ACC, which could possibly happen if. You know, if the FSU, Clemson, and UNC, and NC State, and Vatek, all those uh, programs leave, like, you know, speculated. I mean, that's like the most probable next big move, right? FSU's any day now. I just, if if the ACC loses a bunch of teams, I just really, really want Georgia Tech to be one of those. And so it'd be like, Atlanta market, we're here, you know. You want it back? (laughs) Let us in, give us your monies so we can get better quickly i was talking to somebody in athletics i can't remember where it was probably at the uh one of those events we did this uh this off season but you know we talk about travel expenses because i always complain about you know how much further it is for these these east division games for us they actually got further away with all the the marshals and the james madisons and ods or whatever right we apparently fly to every game anyways we don't take buses we fly to everything so really the cost for us being in Atlanta, it doesn't change. We yeah, could be on a plane. We we could be in the Pac twelve and it doesn't really make a couple extra hours in the air. That's all it is. A couple extra hours. Oof, yeah, so we're all, we're, we're already flying hours. everywhere. So it doesn't really matter which conference we're in. We could be in any conference. Yep. And our travel our travel doesn't really change at all. Maybe a little maybe a little more expensive to fly a couple extra hours, but that's sure. you're already paying for a flight. So it doesn't hurt. We're super close to the airport either. Right. It's a, it's gotta be a huge selling factor for Georgia state for all the other conferences. <laughs> yeah. Like who, like some of these other schools, like what you want to like fly into Birmingham and then drive an extra two hours to Tuscaloosa. You want to fly into, you know, wherever these, the biggest city of these small towns or these small schools, small town schools, like Athens, like you fly into, oh, they may fly into Athens, whatever that Athens airport is. But I'm yeah. saying, you know, versus flying into Atlanta, then then getting into a bus and having to drive all the way to Athens. You come to Atlanta, you could literally hand Marta cards off to kids when they the players when they get off the plane <laughs> and then make it to their hotel. It's they got their own deal. train. It'll be the game. or yeah. rent a bus here. <laughs> what <laughs> crazy? Yeah. My next point is for any team that wants to. Whatever conference we're in, and or any team we want to play out of conference, it's really easy to get to us, and it's really easy for us to get to you. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's true. All right, I think that's all I got. Probably enough. Sounds Maybe. good to me. All right, Sam, you want to take us out of here? Yeah, sure. Thanks everyone for listening. If you like what you heard, or even if you didn't, go to patreon.com forward slash state of Atlanta, where you can support our show. If you join, you get access to our live streaming group chat. Discounts on awesome merch. You can see Brian's wearing some. Maybe, maybe not. Nope. Brian. Brian? Okay. What did I do? No. Go. No, you're not. I thought it was one, one of our shirts. Never mind. Uh, you can get awesome discounts on merch. Not what Brian's wearing. Sorry, David. <laughs> I think mine was a free giveaway. I was tricked. <laughs> I, th- uh, I thought it was one of our shirts when he first uh, logged on today, too. So, 
and free brews at tailgates uh five dollars to join there is a freemium level and you should join because dave is doing fireworks <laughs> say goodbye guys goodbye guys peace